everybody, welcome to the 30k channel. I'm your host, David Bryant, and uh, in this small video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to film the board build video from the from the game between Boris and I for the Christmas special. Now, typically, um, uh, these would be added on to the videos at the end, uh, and those and the, and the games will go out on on the website. Now. Uh, there's no doubt that the channel needs more subscribers, essentially, to uh, to keep going. So uh, I'm going to start to release a lot more content on YouTube, uh, just to try and tempt some of you in. So uh, hopefully, if you if you've enjoyed this board build video, and you want to see the game that uh, that we play on it, uh, then please go to the website, which is the 30kchannel.com. Uh, it's four pound fifty a month, and for that you get six games a month, um, all heresy apart from one which will be Adeptus Titanicus, but maybe into the new year, the Adeptus Titanicus games will go out onto YouTube and then it will just be pure heresy content. Um, Adeptus Titanicus is set in the Horus heresy, but not restricted to, I guess. Uh, um, so there's no reason why we can't sort of do a 40K kind of um, set in 40K, 41st millennium. So uh, we'll have to look at that, but it's majority of heresy. Um, there are plans afoot to do linked games from Adeptus Tenicus into full scale 6x4 and 8x6, and then maybe into a Zone Mortalis as well. But uh, but that's a little bit into the new year. Uh, anyway, so as I said, uh, I'd love to come and subscribe to the website. Uh, we desperately need more subscribers to, to keep going, as I said. It's not cheap uh, filming games at this level, really. Um, the plan is is to show you how I build the boards. Uh, the 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 channel the boards are really really important to the channel. Uh, I think it's one of the USPs. A lot of channels out there use maps and MDF and Games Workshop scenery, which is great. Um, it's definitely uh, easier. It has a really great look to it. But um, I think if you're paying four pound fifty a month uh, to the channel, I think you need something a little bit extra. And I think the channel is quite famous for its boards. Uh, but uh, but I really want to show just how easy they are to build. There's no magic involved. There's no no expense. It's it's really cheap stuff, but super effective. And I think the contrast of the natural rock and the stone and the aggregate and the, the materials that we use really amplify the the, the models and, and it makes the model stand out more. Uh, but also as well, you can build battlefields that you can't build with conventional scenery. Um, you know, if you look at any any land across the country or in the world, it, it undulates and it's got kind of subtle hills and rises. And you know, if you look back historically, you could hold, you could hide a whole tank squadron or a small mobile base in the depression of a hill. You know, if you come until you can't see it. So, and I don't think you get that with um, with typical battlefields that ninety nine point nine percent of us play day to day. So I really like the. The options you get using aggregate and various other bits and bobs. Uh, to that end, I'm going to talk you through the board. Uh, one of the other things that's really important is that the boards for for me they have to make sense. So in this scenario, we're we're on Mars. I mean, you've got to if you're playing Titans, surely. Uh, so we're on Mars. Uh, we've got Legio uh, Mortis versus Legio Astarum, Astorum, excuse me. Um, I haven't totally decided my list. Boris has decided his list and that his is done. He sent it through to me last night. I've been so busy, I haven't decided my list yet, but it will probably be a combination. It'll either be Knights and uh, Titans, or it will just be a complete mirror of Boris's army, which will be quite interesting uh, to play. Anyway, I'm waffling, I'm so sorry. Uh, what we've got is we've got a, a plateau uh, made out of very sort of similar colour to the, to the natural rock that I've got here. Um, and all that is, it, it, I imagine in my head that uh, the mechanic and I brought on this massive floating thing with some magna thermal cannons on there, and they've just they've melted this this kind of plateau flat, so uh, buildings can be erected easily. Uh, but then after that, you know, the the rock is kind of encroached upon it. Um, uh, and the rest of it will just be sand, essentially. But uh, I like this idea. It, it's a small outpost. We've got a little landing pad here. Um, I do have a Thunderhawk to go on it, but I, I'm saving that for something very, very special coming in January, maybe February. So I don't want to give... I don't want to show my hands too quickly. Uh, so I have been very restricted on the train and the models that I've used for this board. Uh, we've got... Uh, it's it's the Forgeweld um, 
it's the Forge World um, Aeronautica Imperialis uh, landing pad when they did it years ago. And I've got some uh, bunkers just to show that it's perhaps a strategically important um, location. Maybe it's a, a secret, you know, hidden base of Kelbor Hal or or some of the Magos, and he, and you know. He, he lands on his Thunderhawk, goes into a building, and then he goes straight down a massive mile long lift almost, and then it opens up into a massive expansive kind of forge that he's hidden away, squirreled away, and he's building all sorts of tech and bits and bobs there. So essentially the battlefield will be, uh, excuse me, the, the, the scenario will be um, probably a Dominion one where we will hold three locations, because on Dominion you can either have five or three objectives, so we'll probably use the um, the the pass through here as one. So if you hold the pass, uh, you score a point. If you hold the landing pad, that's another. And then uh, if you hold the uh, the second one there, and that kind of represents that we're taking control of this area um, for ourselves. Maybe we're opposing Forge Worlds, and we're we're trying to get the 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 stuff that's secreted way below ground. But that's the kind of rough. That's what I've got in my head. I need to discuss that with Boris first, but uh, but that's roughly what I've got in my head. Um, so I've kind of arranged it all where this is the central objective. Tons of line of sight blocking terrain. There's no way that a reaver is going to be able to fire a weapon from one side to the other. It's going to be so much intervening terrain. Uh, these larger rocks will hide a reaver. We're using nothing bigger than a reaver titan. Uh, and these smaller ones will hide knights really easily. And uh, once I start to add the sand, which we'll see in a second, it will create undulations in the ground. And I don't see why you can't hide a reaver, excuse me, a, a knight in one of those undulations. But also when I start to add the sand, we're going to sort of drift it off here and sort of create drifts of sand like you would do in, in the desert. You know, you get these massive sand dunes and they drift off. You know, you get the prevailing wind from one side and this side is completely clear of sand and then the other side is, it's kind of, it's built up as a drift and it kind of snakes along the, uh, the, uh, the land, which is quite interesting. Um, now, a lot of you will say, oh, sand, you know, it damages models. Um, it does if you pick them up and rub them into the sand, absolutely it does. But um, for the bases that, the, that I've got and that Boris has got, it's not going to cause any damage, you know. We might just put a little bit of sand on the base just to kind of make it um, a seamless transition, I guess, to the, the ground we're on. But if you're sensible about it uh, and you knock it off at the end with a, with a soft brush, or you can even get an airbrush on it and just blow it off, then it, it works perfectly. So um, some people might say, oh, you're going to wreck your models, but you, you really, really don't. Uh, some of the other materials that I use, I use a lot of... Um, uh, aquarium aggregate that you can buy from an aquarius or a pet shop um, it comes in loads of different grades so i like to put the thin stuff down first or the thinner stuff uh, and then um, some bigger chunkier stuff just to represent bigger boulders and things and it scales perfectly well with a dips of titanicus or uh, or 30k so it works brilliantly um haven't you sand for a little while because we've done lots of other different boards but you know, when you're fighting on Mars, you, you need to get that colour which you get in the in the sand. I've got some just here, some I prepared earlier. Uh, so you can see it's this beautiful Martian sand. There's no better way to describe it. Um, now my table is super super strong. I've got um, six kind of uh, bookshelves which I brought from Argos. Uh, it's about ten pounds each, uh, and then it's on top of a massive. Um, uh, seven uh, sorry, five foot by seven foot boards, which is reinforced with uh, with two inch by four inch or two by four inch wood, uh, and then on top I've got a six by four board again reinforced with uh, two by four. So it's a super solid board, easily copes with the weight of these rocks. I appreciate it's perhaps not uh, practical at home, but if you've got a garage uh, and you've got a drill and an impact driver and you can get some wood in your car from B&Q, you can build a super, super cheap and easy table. There are plans to kind of do that next year, um, and just to show you how to build a table. You probably don't need it, but some people might say, well, you know, I'm not really sure where to start. So we'll probably take you through that uh, next year. If I can build it, you can most definitely build it. Uh, so the, to the end, uh, the, 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 the table's really strong, and we are gonna probably put about, maybe 15, 20 kilos of sand on the board. 
And what we're going to do in the first instance is literally just cover the black uh, base of the of the board is all we're going to do. Um, this will take some time, so probably about five minutes. So I'm just going to do that very quickly and I'll come back to you with the next step. Right, well that's it pretty much. Uh, the, the sander's gone on. Um, there's still a lot of work to do, so don't think it's finished. Um, what we need to do now is we need to create some drama into the board, because it does look quite flat, a little bit boring, not very exciting. Um, I had planned on having so much more scenery available for this, uh, for, this, uh, for this game today, but as I said, I've kept some of it back. Um, because I've got something very special coming in, in January, February. Um, and so I agonised a lot about whether to use it or not. Some of it's still a little bit unpainted, so I didn't want to produce something that's kind of half cocked. So I wanted to make sure it was right for you guys before I, before I released it. Uh, anyway, so I, I've covered the entire board of the, um, of, the, of the black base, I guess. So now we just need to create a little bit of drama. So um, I've not got a lot of sand left, but uh, we won't need too much. I just want to create some drifts just to kind of just to kind of show, like I mentioned earlier, about the prevailing winds and it adds extra cover, you know. So I quite like that, you know, a little bit more here. I think in an ideal world I would have loads more of these little chunks just to scatter throughout the board. Um, I just haven't got too much of this rock. I need to go buy some from the garden centre probably next week actually over Christmas. Um, so that's fine. Need a little bit more sand here. Uh, and we just wanna, we just wanna put some along here. We wanna create, we wanna create some raised areas as well, and we wanna blend this edge in so, so it's not such a stark contrast from the, the ground, and then it goes like that. So we just wanna try and blend that in a little bit. But also as well, um, we need to put some sand on the actual kind of rock itself because of course it wouldn't uh, miraculously stay free of sand. So we need to do a bit of that. And I imagine some of the sand would slip down into the, into the areas here. Um, we are rapidly running out of sand, unfortunately, but that's all right. What we can do is we can create these mounds I guess and by the time you get a a titan in there it's half obscured you know that's 50% cover in 30k rules you know so or plus one cover or whatever so it um it does work we're just going to put a little bit over the rocks you know because again they wouldn't be completely sand free this bit's a little interesting here um it's almost like a little cove I guess so we can make it a bit of a sheltered location. You could also, uh, with the new terrain from Adeptus Titanicus, you could put some crates in there, uh, you could put a, um, a metal floor in there to show that it's a little outpost, maybe you know some of these little buildings just here to show it's like a little depot away from the main base, maybe they store toxic material here or radioactive, well I guess Mars is radioactive I guess, um, but sort of dangerous substances and stuff, but again I've got all that terrain, it's coming, but just not quite yet. So just sit tight for that. And ultimately as well, the great thing about the sand is that you, you can, if you want to, create trails, you know. It's like being a kid all over again, you know, when you collected like micro machines and you were at school and you're making noises the way through the thing, you know, that, that, that can work. Um, there are plans afoot for that, don't worry. Uh, you know, and it'd be great to have uh, some vehicles, maybe, you know, the odd Land Raider or a Rhino or, um, or you know, some tankers or something just to add a little bit of extra dimension to the board. And as I say, that, that all is coming. So, so sit tight. But I quite like that. I'm going to put a little trail along there. That looks interesting. Um, yeah, so we've got a, we've got a rough board. And this is the beauty of using sand or aggregate or, or something of this form because 
you can just let your imagination run wild and it creates such a vastly different battlefield that you would normally get using sort of conventional methods really and that's the one thing i love about it um you just need to and the beauty of it is you know it's like an etch a sketch isn't it you know you can just do whatever you want if you don't like it just rub it out and start again it's it's so easy but super effective I quite like under here you've got a bit of a bit that juts out and then you've got a I can imagine with the terrain I've got later, we're going to stuff it full of all sorts of bits and bobs, you know, like a little dumping ground almost, and, you know, almost very similar to the little cove over there. Um, quite like that. I'm just going to make a bit more of a drama of this, this corner section over here. Yeah, that looks, looks okay. You know, ultimately as well, if you get some knights or some old titans or something, you can make them wrecked stick them in and then cover a bit of sand you can always create like a titan graveyard as well you know that'd be a fantastic uh piece of terrain uh, to fight over you know that'd be really cool and i'm just going to get one final uh implement that uh, that works so well so let me just go grab that very quickly okay here it is the magic ingredient here uh sieve um the beauty about the sieve is it allows you to just give the, a certain locations a bit of a dusting just to blend everything all together. I mean, that's literally all you need for this board. Uh, it does work much better when we use uh, salt boards to create uh, sand, uh, excuse me, snow effects. Um, and actually the last game that went out on the channel, I did a board build video for that. I think I'm gonna cut the board build off it uh, and release it on YouTube as well, so you can see that board. It's it's really really cool. It looks so dramatic. It's fantastic. Um, I mean that's it. Super simple. I think there's plenty of of uh, line of sight blocking terrain in there to keep things a little bit interesting. I'm just going to top this up here a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better. A bit there. Yeah, and I'm going, to, I'm going to scoop out these, uh, you know, almost like the uh, uh, the passageway through the rocks. I guess. I guess there's one here as well, but this would sort of be the main thoroughfare here. Put my road back in there. That's fine. And then obviously we've got one here. A couple of ways in, really. You could go this way or that way. So we're just gonna, it's quite therapeutic really, playing with the, moving the sand around, it's quite nice. I'm just gonna scoop that up there a little bit. And I'll do a shot of, uh, I'll, I'll add a shot at the end of the deployment where we've got all the Titans and the Knights in place and we're ready for battle. Uh, so you'll get a really good sense of, of what's going on here. I'm just going to fiddle a little bit longer with this. I think that looks good, you know. When you get down, it's hard in the battle report because the camera's usually up here. But when you're actually playing the game and you get down and have a look, you cannot draw a line of sight from one side of the battlefield to the other. And that is absolutely critical because the last thing you want is just stuff shooting each other off the board. We want to see a little bit of combat. And, and the benefit to playing. Um, 30k Adeptus Titanicus sale is that you to play a massive game with tons of knights and, and titans takes a week, takes so much time. And mainly it's played on an 8x6, which is too small, you know, it's too small a board to put a reaver down or or even a warlord for that matter, you know. So uh the beauty of this is is that you you still get all the rules of 30k that we love just at a different scale and, and it's so easy to play it's unreal i think this game will be quite quick if i'm honest with you but it's just so much fun and also as well you know i'm a normal guy i have a normal job just like you guys uh, and this is done out of passion and, and 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 i enjoy it so much and i do not have the money to buy a warlord titan or to buy a warlord and two reavers and five warhounds and then have the time and effort to paint store transport and go to a, a yearly meet or i just don't have that sort of time and yeah uh, the adeptus titanicus models are 
some of the best models that have ever come out of Games Workshop. They are unbelievable. And the detail and the scale is just superb. And you can, you can buy a Reva, I think a Warlord for 95 quid, I think, and then you can have a massive board and play a game on it and you'll still get that sense of scale um, and the sense of, of, of range as well. And don't forget that the rules that we use to play 80 scale 30K is that all of the movement is done uh, in inches, so it gives a sense of pace, but all the weapon ranges are done at centimeters, and that really makes you think about maneuvering knights, which are super fast, um, and then the weapon ranges as well, which is fantastic, because if you play a Reaver Titan on a standard six by four and eight by six, every weapon will be in range, you know, whereas when you play it at this scale, weapons will be out of range, and that brings a whole new tactical element to the game which is just, it's crazy fun, it's so good. Anyway, I've waffled far too much. Um, I hope you can see that from this, the board is cheap, but super effective. You know, we've got a set of Games Workshop Train, which is probably 50 quid. We've got some Forge World stuff, okay, you can't always pick it up, but the new Aeronautica Imperialis stuff with the bonkers and the flak wagons, uh, sorry, the flak emplacements, and the missile emplacements. You know, you could use that, cost 25 quid. So about eight quid each from a uh, from a, a Dobby store or a garden center. And I think there's about 20 pounds worth or 30 pounds worth of rocks on the board. And a bag of sand will cost you a fiver. Okay, you've got to build a board, you need a dedicated space, totally get that. But it's just so cheap, so cheap. Anyway, I would love you to watch this. Uh, be inspired and go build your own board. And if you build a board similar to this or in the same sort of vein, ping me a message. We'd love to have a look at it. You know, we can learn from you as much as you can learn from me, you know. Um, and I would love you to go and watch the game between Boris and I. And to do that, I need you to subscribe to the website. So again, website, uh, 30kchannel.com, £4.50 a month, six games a month. You get a lot of value for your money. Um, we're not trying to do everything under the sun like some of the channels. I just physically couldn't do it. So it's dedicated to Heresy and Adept of Titanicus. So, uh, so please go there and watch it. Really hope you've enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your comments. Um, make sure they're positive. You know, negativity is such a horrible thing. Uh, particularly, you know, this has gone out on YouTube. It's free of charge. I appreciate your comments. But uh, the channel, the, in the past, the channel's come under fire and had some really awful comments. So, you know, just think before you press the enter button. But uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And uh, I will see you again in another Forge World video very, very soon. Thanks. <laughs>